Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Priyanka and uh, hi, welcome. This is our first class and uh, uh, we'll be talking about prosthetic dentistry and uh, the topic for today is diagnosis and treatment planning of completely edentulous patients. So in short, the patients which do not have even... Okay, coming to the learning outcome. So what does that mean is, uh, so by the end of the lecture, you should be able to answer these four questions. Okay, so you should be able to diagnose the given uh, condition in patients effectively, infer the importance of medical and dental history in diagnosis and treatment planning, analyze all possible variations in the oral anatomy during examination, formulate a treatment planning considering the observation made during the diagnosis, okay? So coming to the clinical history, so first of all, as you all know, in all the departments, first of all, we um, take care about the uh, personal data and uh, personal data consists of six things, that is name, sex, age, address, telephone number, occupation. So. Uh, name is important as you can address address the patient with the name. Um, sex, there are some diseases which are, you know, which have a predilection in the female and the male category. Age is important, especially in prosthetic dentistry, as uh, the complete dentistry patient usually are 50 above. Yeah, so they are 50, 60, 70 Yes, I think even 80. So usually, and there are many age-related disease, systemic disease, uh, uh, systemic disease, which are related. Okay, address phone number is always good for their personal record. So if anything happens, we can refer to those. Okay, so these are basically all the confidential info. Uh, occupation. So there are some occupation hazards which happen, right? So some diseases can be caused due to in some uh, specific occupation, right? So this is also an important uh, detail, okay? Coming to the systemic status, okay? So conditions affecting complete denture therapy, there are many of them. So starting first with the most important is diabetes uh, mellitus. So uh, diabetes is commonly seen, patients suffering from diabetes also has osteoporosis, residual alveolar bone resorption. So uh, this is known as RRR, okay, residual rich resorption, uh, which is very important in prosthetic dentistry uh, to restore and make the dentures, okay, and how do we deal with them? There are certain impression techniques and, uh, you know, uh, certain things which are, we are supposed to do. So, uh, you know, uh, this is really important. And yes, because of diabetes, there is delayed in wound healing. So they are more prone to infection. So we can see if they have an extraction socket, it's going to take very long to heal. And, you know, so things can be related to each other. Okay. In this condition, the impression technique, which is indicated is mucostatic. Okay, so there are more impression techniques, so definitely we'll talk in detail about this in further lectures. Teeth selection and type of occlusion is also important in such patients, okay? Uh, and we have to avoid any surgical intervention because uh, that would create a problem and there, anyway, there will be a wound healing issue. Coming to uh, the second one, that is a cardiovascular disease. Patients should be given an early morning appointment to avoid any, you know, tissue changes which occur due to medication late in the later part of the day. So duration appointment, duration of the appointment should be short and it should not be so strong. Okay, at least we can try to do that. In anemia, uh, what happens is there is soft tissue overlying bone which becomes fragile and there is a possibility to enhance bone loss. So again, bone loss is uh, not a good thing and uh, yes, there are methods to take care about that in uh, prosthodontics if there is already alveolar ridge resorption, right? So there is a decrease in the denture bearing capacity of foundation tissues, right? So same thing. You will see that there is a loss of the denture bearing capacity so meaning loss of the ridge it will be a low um, a resort ridge okay uh, the healing capacity will also reduce okay coming to arthritis um, some of the clinical features pain um, uh, crepitation 
during mandibular movements, okay? So, yes, when they cannot do mandibular movements, jaw relation will be hampered. So, a procedure known as jaw relation, restricted movements, tenderness in muscle of mastication in advanced stage, disability, atrophy of uh, associated muscles. So, if the muscles don't work, the patient won't be able to really masticate and chew, chew well, or he will have a less... Um, Decreased ability to do any of the, you know, functions, okay? Difficulty in wearing and cleaning dentures, okay? Uh, impression making and jaw relation will be definitely difficult, okay? Frequent occlusal corrections may be required because as uh, he will not have a stable occlusion as uh, he might keep having some resorption and uh, he might not close in one direction properly. Okay, coming to the neuromuscular disorders. So, uh, these are the condition that can improve. Um, yeah, sorry. So, these are the condition which it, which will improve the uh, uh, by advocating neurotropics because the patient's neuromuscular coordination would not enable to do us a proper jaw relation. Okay, so jaw relation is a procedure where we record the relation from maxilla to the mandible. Okay and also to the cranium so so it's there are three types of jaw relation guys okay i'm not going to get into detail of that right now but um those do need a neuromuscular coordination yeah and uh, that would be hampered so these are some uh, enhancers which will uh, help in uh, relieving this disorder yeah okay so uh, vitamin b6 and b12 should be administered okay uh, so, any secretory uh, as, uh, activity is reduced, affecting the defense mechanism of oral tissues. Okay, so these things will not work well. That's why it should be uh, reduced. Okay, I mean, that's why it will be reduced. Yeah, because of the disorder. Okay, patient going undergoing radiotherapy. Okay. So osteoradionecrosis and necrosis of the soft tissue is commonly seen and uh, of course it's contraindicated, right? Posterior occlusion should be such that it's reduced stress and there should be a flat occlusion table. So uh, if you have a, a flat occlusion table, so there are some teeth which is known uh, uh, which is known as monoplane teeth, mono occlusion, yeah? So, those are teeth without any cusp and they are more flat, okay? So those will be the ones which are indicated here. Just reduce the stress. Okay, coming to the dental history. So you need to know the reasons of the tooth loss. So what are the reasons the periodontal caries or any other causes, okay? Uh, so we can know if, um, if there is one teeth remaining or if there is something, you know, uh, what what is the possibility of it also falling off in this uh, region you understand so um you can know i mean definitely can at least ask the patient okay previous denture experiences this is very important in the old denture wearers so first of all it's a little difficult to deal with this these patients because they have a denture in certain manner which they are wearing from 10 years 20 years 30 years and Suddenly it breaks or, uh, it, you know, there's wound resorption and they expect you to make exactly the same denture and then things get complicated and then, you know, so to take care of patient expectations is a little difficult, but if you do a good job, they will definitely be convinced, okay? So, first of all, you have to have a chief complaint in the patient's own language. Uh, duration of the wearing of old denture should be written. So, information about the aesthetics, the phonetics, mastication, retention, everything has to be asked. Aesthetics is the way it looks. Phonetics is the way they were able to speak. Mastication is the uh, way they eat. Retention is the fit of the denture. So vertical dimension of occlusion and centric relation also can be seen if they have it. Okay, so you can also use that. Uh, coming to the uh, evaluation of mental attitude. So... Um, first of all, the Devan statement. So this is a very famous statement. If you want to meet, um, so sorry, meet the mind of the patient before the mouth of the patient.
connection. So once you get into the mind, you understand many things. So Dr. M. M. House classified the mental attitudes into um, philosophical, exacting, um, indifferent, and hysterical. So these are the very difficult phases. Uh, physiological uh, um, is the one which is the ideal one. Okay. Okay, so the philosophical patient uh, is the one which is the very ideal patient, learns to adjust rapidly. So he has rational, he's sensible, calm, composed, okay? He would understand how to overcome confl con con conflicts, sorry. He would organize his time, habits, manner, eliminate the frustration. If you explain something, he'll understand. Exacting patient will require extreme care, effort, patience, so little on the difficulty level the patient is uh, you know uh, a little precise accurate and you know has several demands and then you know need to understand and the patient is intelligent and will understand and he will give his time but then you have to make him explain a lot of things and just many things okay indifferent patient is very questionable unfavorable uh, favorable prognosis so will not understand a lot exhibits little concern he's uninterested less motivated uh, he pays no attention to your instructions he does not cooperate blames the dentist so um yeah this is a problematic patient okay okay so like an educational program is required for this patient to teach this patient okay hysterical patient is like an emotionally unstable excitable so he's very extreme in everything. Understand he's basically unstable. And um, prognosis will, he will have an unfavorable and, you know, he'll require some psychiatric help if he's not cooperative. Okay. So this type of patient should be made aware of their problems. And um, there are, you know, many of uh, his symptoms will result you know, in um, having problem with the dentures or having problem with the uh, treatment plan you are going through. Okay, so these are difficult to um, handle. Okay, coming to clinical examination. So coming to the extra oral first. So you can see you have to know the shape of the faces. This is the square. This is the tapering, and this is the ovoid. Okay. So why the shapes of the faces are important? Because they help us in the teeth setting and teeth selection, I'm sorry, okay? So, uh, the squarish will have more of a squarish sort of teeth. The tapering will get a little tapered one, okay? Uh, so, these two, and they will have a little bit oval and also depends on male, female, okay? So, same with this, okay? So, these are the curvature of the teeth, yeah. How would they be concave, flat? Okay, so it is a little important in the teeth selection, which you, of course, you'll get to read. Okay, coming to the facial profile. So, your angles classification is there class one, class two, class three, normal, retrognathic, prognathic. We'll discuss it in detail later. Facial symmetry is also important, symmetrical, asymmetrical. So, many times when we are reporting the free numb, sometimes the facial midline doesn't coincide with the mental midline those things come into play so yes these things are very, very important facial height normal decreased vertical dimension increase so yes if there is a collapsed uh, appearance um, that means the vertical dimension decrease especially for patients without teeth right old patient edentulous patient increase means chart uh, like uh, stressed out and strained so long faces okay so you can judge like that but of course there are methods to report the vertical dimension and uh, of course we use that okay so facial muscle tone normal flabby or a spastic color of the eye complexion so basically these two help us in the teeth selection okay yeah uh the uh, facial muscles help us um see uh, and appreciate the jaw relations so we can see how the muscles are reacting to the dimensions we have measured so this is very important okay 
coming to the lips. The lips is also really important, right? So lips thickness, thin, thick or normal. Lip length, long, normal, short. Yes, so lip length is really important because it, it either it hides the denture, expose the teeth, you know, suitable, like sustainable, um, like enough, yeah. A short is that it becomes visible only while slight movement. So these things have to again be checked in the trying stage and in the jaw relation stage. How much is the, um, where is the smile line and, you know, how much there is in buckle exposure yeah in the maxillary denture okay so yeah fine sorry so here like you say the face is uh, so it, the, you know all this helps in the selection and the arrangement of the teeth okay yes and then it will definitely help you in the arrangement of the teeth okay so tmj troubles sorry the tmj joint so if there are troubles in the tmj pain opening movements of the mandible tenderness clicking sound crepitation deviation muscle tenderness limitation in mandibular movement this will really help us in uh, uh, the, i mean this will not help us in the jaw relations which is a centric relation which is one of the part of the jaw relation which is very important so uh, that will the centric relation basically depends on the structural functional harmony of the osseous structures the intra-articular tissues and the capsular ligaments right so this will be hampered if there is a okay so coming to the examination of the tmj so you put the bulk of your index finger uh place in the external auditory meatus and uh, you know equal pressure is applied while instructing the patient to open and close yeah and then you can see and feel if there is any pain okay that would indicate the abnormal uh, condition also auscultation Coming to the intraoral examination, so th these are the arch, okay, so this is the arch form. So e either it's a U-shape or either it's a V-shape, okay. Coming to residual ridge form, so these are the intraoral examination, guys, okay. So this is the Atwood's classification, cl class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay, like that. Pre-extraction, post-extraction well high well rounded knife edge low well rounded and depressed so this is basically like the resorbed one okay resorbed and good ridge okay <coughs> sorry so we get variation of these cases in our we may know the ridge relationship understand okay so that'll help us to arrange the teeth guys again yeah coming to the inter arch distance so there's adequate access of inter arch inadequate so 16 to 20 mm is adequate um and the excessive is that it has got resolved because of the residual ridge resorption then there is a long internal space and which will lead to poor stability and retention also inadequate space is there is some mechanical interference okay sorry yeah okay going to class one class two very resolved and class three hardly any any space okay so this is the ideal one Coming to the undercut location, so undercut um, impersonances are also friends and foes. So, uh, guys, these are enemies that sometimes they, you know, won't let you uh, issue your dentures. And, you know, like uh, when you have to insert the uh, RPD in the patient's mouth or a CD in the patient's mouth, there will be a problem. On the other hand, sometimes they also give you retention, guys. So... Yes, it goes both the ways. Bony irregularities, you can take care in the pre-prosthetic surgery, which comes under mouth preparation, guys. So uh, these bony spicules, again, when you make a denture, they will hurt the tissue and the patient. So you cannot put a denture on top. So you need to relieve all the irregularities, okay? Retained root pieces is a complete no-no. You cannot have these. These will create infection and create problems. We need to get all these things extracted and then do a case. Oral mucous membrane. It has to be properly examined for inflammatory lesions, any hyperplastic or displaceable tissues, any pathological lesions, or malignancies, any hyperplasia, any ulcers, any fistratum so these details definitely you'll be reading in your 
OMR department, guys. Okay? So anything relating to the oral mucosa. Everything needs to be perfectly fine before we do prosthetics, guys. Okay? This is like an overgrowth of the gingival tissue. This is a bony spicule, guys. This is retained roots. This is more like a flabby tissue. Okay? All right, guys. Coming to the palatal vault, okay? So, palatal vault basically is the curvature of the maxillary palate, okay? Also called as the hard palate, right? Uh, so, this can be U shaped, sorry, uh, U shaped, rounded, U shaped, U shaped, and V shaped. Uh, sorry, guys. V shaped, rounded, and U shaped. Okay, three types, guys. Yeah, basically, most commonly seen as the U and V types. Uh, yeah, U type is most suitable in reference to retention and stability, guys. Whereas V causes deflective force and it's very hard to get retention, guys. Okay, in uh, uh, recording the PPS, the posterior palatal seal for the retention of the maxillary. Coming to the maxillary tuberosity, these are normal and larger peninculas, which is like, um, uh, what do you call, um, this is a hanging, like a hanging tuberosity, okay. Coming to saliva, saliva is very important, guys, in the retention of the denture. Without saliva, there's no retention, guys, okay. So it forms a seal between the denture and the palate. It, it's sandwiched inside, right? So the normal and uh, amoid and viscosity is favorable. Thin watery saliva is best in theory, but a mix that include, includes some viscous saliva will provide best retention, right? So guys, in the denture issue stage, uh, this is really important, okay? Thick ropey saliva complicates the impression making and obviously uh, <laughs> it annoys the patient, yes? So it works both the ways, but... Uh, Having a good saliva retention, excessive sal saliva is also common when the patient is first. There is insertion of the denture, but because they don't understand the mechanism of swallowing, guys. So when we have teeth, we know that we have to swallow. They will not understand that they need to keep swallowing. So once they swallow, these, these things improve over time, okay? So deficient saliva, xerostomia. In, G in geriatric patients, there are sy systemic disorders and... Uh, because of them taking taking medications, so this may be a problem. So no saliva results of radiation or oral cancer. Okay, so real zero stomia is a problem. Okay. So guys, tongue coming to the tongue. So uh, tongue size can be classified into normal, abnormal, large tongue position. So rights classification class one, class two, class three. So the tongue lies in the floor of the mouth with the tip forward and slightly below the incisal edge. Second is the tongue flattened and broadened, but the tip is in the normal position. So retract to depress into the floor of the mouth with the tip, tip curled upward, okay? So we can see. Class one, class two is the normal one, and class three, guys. Phrenal attachment can be normal, close to the crest, or broad. So this is very important when we are having our border seal and also while recording the impression yes so this comes into play all right for both maxilla and mandible and sometimes these are very uh, prominent sometimes these are not prominent okay so labial frenum the buccal frenum right okay coming to the tori here guys what i've noticed is i've not seen more tori <laughs> before so every other patient who comes up it's very prevalent in this part of uh, malaysia i guess or in malaysia so uh this is very commonly seen especially the torus platinus okay platinus so this is in the maxilla and mandibular torus also i've seen in a few cases um maxillary tor tori is very common so does not require surgical intervention unless large and bulbous. No, they are not really large and bulbous, but yeah, they are there. So sometimes you can make like a roofless denture. That means like a horseshoe shaped denture. You can cut out the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, you can 
cut out from the PPS and make it like a horseshoe shape, like a U-shaped denture. Sometimes you can also, you know, uh, cover, cover the torus up and it will also aid in retention, guys. So I we have done both the things and both work fine, okay? All right, so mandibular torus is usually more of a problem. It interferes in the lingual bars. Yes, guys. So this is more problem, but I, this is really I have not seen this commonly, so it's fine. Surgical correction is indicated if it's very prominent. Otherwise, especially if there's a lot of undercut. So I told you, undercut cut can go both both ways. So this is the posterior lingual area, which is known as the retromyeloid fossa, and it's in, important for the stability and seal, the peripheral seal. Okay. So Neo had classified into three types so class one is when you put a mouth mirror it is not visible when the tongue is in a slightly, slightly protruded position class two one half of the mouth mirror is visible and which is less favorable the entire mouth mirror is visible which is the least favorable favorable so usually it's class one value usually yes sometimes it's class two but you you have methods to deal with that yeah yeah, guys, okay, so this region on both the sides, guys, both the sides, okay, this is a mandibular edentulous cast, this is the ridge, guys, and this is the cast, okay, this is the base, right, and that's the retromyelohyosis, okay, coming to special investigations, so there are radiographic investigations which can be done, um, panoramic radiograph is known as an OPG, guys, okay, can be done. So why do we do it? We can do it to study the residual bridge resorption, RRR. Uh, we don't usually do it, guys. I rarely advise patients to do it. But yes, in severe cases where I see a lot of problems, I do tell them to do it, okay? Radiograph examination of bone density by mesh. So yes, bone density can be measured, okay? So mesh um, has written implant textbook, okay? So bone density can be measured. He's the author of the implant textbook. Uh, okay, uh, study of location of anatomic structures. Yes, of course, so these things can be studied in radiograph only if required, guys. That's why these are not a special investigation, not required, usually, only if required. Diagnostic cards only, uh, cast only if required. So we take an impression just like a study model or a study cast or a diagnostic cast okay these are the three three different names it aids in the um, evaluation of anatomy and relationship in absence of the patient so we can study and see how the ridge is um, uh, where is the phrenal attachment is it, is it even visible how deep is the arch um, how's the where is the pps if we can you know see okay so it helps in evaluating sorry yeah these things Ridge relationships, confirm clinical findings, measuring, determining relation of other structures, decision about pre-prosthetic surgery, undercut surveying. So everything can be done. Okay, so it's like a study model, a study cast. Pre-extraction report. So yes, this is very important if the patient has it. Okay, so usually we we don't do this. I mean, we just see old dentures that the patient has. Yeah, okay. So it can be done. It's a very good method. So photograph showing the natural teeth, how their natural teeth was. Old radiographs, if they have any um, diagnostic cast radi radiographs obtained from other dentists. So again, this is something which no one really brings. But it can be done. Okay. Existing dentures is the best method which we usually use. So the impression of the patient's existing denture taken and diagnostic cast. Of course, um, if we can take a model of this and keep it with us. And also check the vertical dimension, the centric relation, the centric occlusion, okay? These are all the jaw relation things can be checked. Other investigative procedures, so to rule out diabetes mellitus, patient's BP has to be recorded, okay? The hemoglobin level has to be checked, intraoral, extraoral, any biopsy advised is toe path examination. So other, these are the other investigations which can be done if required by your geriatric patient, okay? So treatment plan goes as follows. So it should be like specific, uh, you know, specify regarding the treatment procedure, operating time, lab time, fees, everything has to be informed. Uh, consent regarding the same has to be obtained. You have to explain the patient beforehand how much, 
how many times does he have to come how much does he have to pay how how much is the amount of time which all the appointments will take okay everything has to be explained to the patient okay so completely the children's patient the adjunctive care patient education and motivation is required of course and it has to be you know educated about the same elimination of infection elimination of pathosis treatment of abused tissue if required tissue conditioning so you use tissue conditioners here guys of course we'll learn about that in detail nutritional counseling if required so all these has to be taken care of in prosthodontic care conventional complete denture implant supported complete denture so this also has to be informed to the patient what are we planning out in the prosthodontic care adjunctive care guys so in patient education you can teach him about the dental health and treatment outcomes you can tell the limitation of a complete denture and why maybe you should get an implant supported over denture or you know instead yeah uh, problems associated with dentures in initially and then how it helps improve importance of oral and dental hygiene so dental hygiene after the denture is very important guys okay so dental hygiene instructions are very important they are given need for regular checkups so also convincing the patient to do treatment procedures such as surgical treatment if required motivating the patient diet counseling okay so and also if required refer to a dietitian why guys you are hearing too much nutritional diet nutritional diet in this lecture because these are geriatric patients these are very old patients who don't have teeth so they're not chewing well they're not eating half of our nutritional uh requirement things you understand so that's why we are having this thing as uh, you know we're and and emphasizing more on diet and nutrition okay so there are now non-surgical and surgical methods to treat abuse tissue guys so resting the denture supporting tissues is one method regular massaging is one method um occlusion correction can be done establishing a vertical height refitting the denture there are drugs to eliminate infection if somewhere in this something happened nutritional supplements okay so these can be seen uh, maybe after the issue or before the issue these things can be taken direct taken care of regularly okay surgical method guys okay so a correction of hyperplastic rich um, tissue so that's like a flabby tissue which is present in certain you know combination syndrome so um if we, of course we'll read about it in detail in other lectures so flabby tissues can be taken care of uh, so um also, we can take care of this uh, pa uh, papillomatosis, okay? So, papillomatosis is, um, uh, guys, uh, these are dermal papillary, uh, papilla um, overgrowth, guys, which can be taken care of, okay? Uh, yeah, so these are basically the... Uh, uh, sorry guys these are like the projection of the dermal um, papilla which is like above the skin surface okay which can be taken care of guys okay uh, coming to the epilis uh, fistatum so these are like the fi like the benign fibrous connective tissue okay so these are basically the overgrowths like the gingival overgrowths yeah which has to be taken care of also coming to the fourth one that is the hyperplastic pen pedunculus uh, tuberosity so here this like an overhang tuber tuberosity okay so which also has to be taken care of okay so indications are um no response to non-surgical obviously so if non-surgical don't work then the surgical has to go through okay so it interferes with stability that's why it has to be taken care of okay phenol attachment so there is maxillary labral phenol attachment okay and um, okay so that has to be taken care of if lingual tongue ties there prominent buccal phrenai so those things have to be taken care of okay indications if it's really near to the crest of the ridge where you really cannot record 
and exert too much pressure on the ridge surface because we are going to place the ridge and the denture on the ridge you understand so cannot be really at the edge okay so phrenectomy is indicated for such cases okay guys so coming to i think my last slide which is surgical methods okay so for papillary hyperplasia these are the small lesion is sharp you know uh can be a uh, see, scene on the red small lesion seen on the hard palate guys yeah so it can be taken care of by electrosurgery large lesion split thickness supra peristal flap can pick it up okay if they are large lesions uh, vestibular plasty it restores the ridge height by lowering the muscle attachment and attached because it's only if indicated guys we we get the patients do this usually none of it is indicated it's commonly seen as like the bony spicule which has to be like uh, you know like alveoloplasty basically and uh, also extraction of the uh, the hopeless prognosis sheet that's like the class three or the root stumps and then waiting for the healing periods that is mostly seen in our department all right guys so thank you so much for patient listening guys and hope you understand the lecture uh, so now i think every thursday we will be having a lecture we will see tuesday thursdays whenever so guys uh, please um, let me know if you have any questions guys and uh, you can come and see me on the prosto floor on the level 20 in the polyclinic 3. I'm always around there, guys. Uh, so, guys, you can come and see me. And uh, any questions, please read and let me know, guys. Yeah, thank you.